Yeah. So uh, I really guess I already introduced my talk. Um, yeah, I'm afraid this will be a bit more technical. Um, so the main issue is about um, how we can compare estimates across the countries and ADSS. Um, by compare, I mean the issue of quality and uh, uh, sampling error, or specifically the, um, uh, the variance of the estimates. Um, no. Just introduction, so first introduction. Uh, we'll cover some, some basic stuff about sampling theory. So, maybe I will be there a bit faster. And some very important issue in the, in the SS um, uh, sampling designs is the feature of cluster sampling, where not yeah, elementary units are sampled, but whole clusters are selected at once. And then, this is the second, and estimating of design effects, which is basically related to variance estimation. And from those design effects, you can derive the effect of sample size, which is a tool to ensure that yeah, estimates or same estimates across countries have roughly the same uh, sampling variance. Okay, so this is already what uh, I told you. Um, we have different countries participating in the ESS. Um, each of the countries is free to use their own, their own sample design and implement it independently because they have all um, different endowments in the different nations, so this is necessary. On the other hand, we want to have comparable estimates across the countries, so how we do that? Because the variance, I said here, uh, sampling error, but it should be for me the sampling variance, because if we use uh, unbiased estimates, as I assume in this presentation, only the sampling variance is left, because yeah, Approximately, we will give the true value of unbiased estimate. Okay, so how do we do that? Um, as you all know, the sampling variance is related to the sample size. So, this is the tool we try to set the cross sample size, then multiply it by the yeah, estimated or assumed uh, response rate, and we have the net sample size. And from there on, we can um, try to, um, to set it in a way that uh, the final uh, variance um, of the estimator is comparable across the countries. So, therefore, we need a variance estimation, and yeah, this is at the core of this tool. So, this is now some basic uh, yeah, sampling theory. So, what we understand about sampling design, I've just put here the sampling from a final population. This is a set of numbers, just the indices uh, from 1 to capital M. And S, this bold S, is just a sample. So, just to give you an example, if you're sampling from a population of size n, and we uh, have samples of unequal size, so samples can have sizes from 1 to capital N, we have n to the power of capital N possible samples. If you're sampling just with fixed sample size n, then we have here capital N over n as possible samples that we can select from this population. So, then under a sampling design, to be on the same level, we have understand under a sampling design, a sampling design is a yeah, multivariate probability distribution across the set of all possible samples, which is supposed to the support of the sampling design. Okay, just an example here, um, a sampling design P on support SN, we have, yeah, this is positive, so it's the support is, includes all samples that can be selected. Um, this is greater zero um, for all S tested on the, in the possible set of samples. And of course, if we do the sum over all possible samples in the, in the support, we get a lot. So this is a probability distribution function. Uh, yeah, for now, I'm just assume that we are something about um, without replacement and a fixed size. Okay, so if we have the sampling designs, we can derive some basic properties of the sampling design. The very important one is the inclusion probability. Um, I put here two kinds. It's the first order inclusion probability, pi k, tells us what the probability is that the unit k is included into the sample. So if we know the sampling design, this is the yeah, this is one way to calculate pi k uh, as a theoretical value. Yeah. We can also use different approaches. It just tells us we look all samples that include k, and then from the set of all possible samples, and then sum up the probability of those samples. Because again, pi from this bold s tells us the probability that this specific sample, bold s, is selected from all possible samples. 
Yeah, and then we get the probability that the unit case um, selected. Then for variance estimation, we usually need the second order inclusion probabilities. Those with sampling without replacement, which means you have a correlation between sampling units. We don't put them back, then the draws would be independent, so we don't put them back. So this means um, we have correlations between the selections. And this is therefore we need the second order inclusion probability, which just tells us the probability of unit K and L is included together in one sample. So yeah, we just look all samples that include K and L and sum their probabilities. So um, if we have the inclusion probabilities from our sampling design, we can use some um, assumption type of estimators, which will be the basic one, just need the inclusion probabilities for that one. And for instance, if you want to estimate the total of some variable y, um, which are called theta, you can use this estimator theta hat, uh, and you need to use this pi to indicate that's not just some estimator, which are usually indicated by hat, and just uh, that's the Herbert Thompson estimator which is just the weighted sum of our observations from the sample, weighted by the inverse of the inclusion probability. This is the unbiased estimator for the total of the variable. So this, um, this estimator is a well-known variance. It looks like this, it's a bit complicated. Um, we have this double sum here, um, which is also, so usually with some arbitrary designs, those things, the second order inclusion probabilities, Sometimes are not so easy to calculate, and especially if n is large, you can imagine that calculating this is a very complicated process. So there is some approximation formula for this one, but then it's not so not so necessary for this talk. Okay, so going back to the simple design, just show you an example. If we selecting taking simple random sampling, which means that every possible sample that we can select from our population has the exact um, same probability of being selected, which means we are sampling the fixed size and without replacement, so this is the number of possible samples, just divided uh, one through this, and yeah, every sample has the same probability of being selected, so this is the value of our uh, sampling design for each sample. This gives us the following first order inclusion probability and this second order inclusion probability. Inserting this in this Equation here, we will get just maybe this is something familiar or different ways of uh, writing this. But this is the simple random sampling variance of Herbert Thompson estimator, and sigma square is the population variance of our variable i. So, variance here depends on, of course, on the, on the attribute of the population, the sigma, and of course, how much elements we sample from our population. Okay, so now the design effect. Design effect is defined as um, the ratio between the variance of our Herbert Thompson estimator divided by the reference design. And the reference design is always the simple random sampling design. So we look how the possibly more complicated design fares against the reference design, which is the simple random sampling design. And to be fair, we have to compare designs that have the same expected sample size in case they are a fixed sample size, as in our case, the sum of the inclusion probabilities over the universe is always n, the sample size. So we have to be fair here, comparing from the sampling designs with the same sample sizes. Again, um, if you have the same sample size but different sampling designs, this can still mean that this variance is different from our assumption estimator. That's also not only depend on the sample size, but of course on the sampling design. So, just put it here, this is the, again, the formula for some arbitrary uh, sampling design for the Herbert Thompson estimator, as you've seen before, and just divide it by the variance for the simple random sampling case. So, the design effect is uh, for a given estimator and for some arbitrary design, just specify. And in the denominator, you always have the variance for this estimator under the case of simple random sampling. So, Again, yeah, here, this is a catchy phrase, and the design effect um, that expresses how well a design P fares in comparison to the reference design simple random sampling. Uh, if it's greater, if it's greater, uh, probably here one, if it's greater than one, um, one then the, the variance under the current design is greater than under simple random sampling, the precision is lost by not using simple random sampling, 
and if it's smaller than one, precision is gained by not using simple one example. Okay, now some other sampling design. This is a simple class and cluster sampling. It's very similar to a simple random sampling, but here we select not single units, but whole clusters of units. So, why that? Um, because you can imagine if you have a population frame and you just draw a simple random sample of your, from your whole frame, um, this can be very expensive. Uh, the interviewer has to go to this point and then the next randomly selected, so you have no clusters. Um, so, this, this might be very expensive, so usually also because of the sampling frame, how they are constructed and so on, you take cluster samples, which means that you're going to select the whole cluster. It might be a household or a whole block, or <coughs> block or whatever. So, instead of selecting elementary units, we select groups of units, categorized by geographical order. Yeah. Okay, so this is example population. Uh, the values, I just took the index numbers there, so we have um, 25 units in this population. There you see the, the totals of the rows and the totals of the columns. And I compile two scenarios. One is the, we take as clusters the rows and one we take the clusters the columns. And I compare that with sampling from those 25 units by simple random sampling. Both, um, three, in all three scenarios, we have the same sample size. I'm selecting 10 units um, with simple random sampling or two clusters, either by rows or by columns. And each row or column has five elements. So all the samples have the same size, but they produce different variances. That is why, already seen, just to do with here, I have to put the total here because I'm going to estimate the total. Um, you see, row wise, the totals do not differ very much. But column-wise, they do. So, and uh, the heterogeneity within clusters, or homogeneity, for this sake, uh, has a lot of to do with the variance of this cluster sampling. So, these are the results from a small simulation I made. So, I took 100,000 samples for each of the three designs. And this is the mean of my estimates over those 100,000 applications. You see there the true values, of course, are 325. So bias is not even an issue for both this term of all three designs, but the variances. So simple random sampling with this variance, and if the clusters are the columns, we have a very high variance compared if the clusters are the rows. In case the rows is even smaller than for a simple random sampling. So why is that? That's because within rows, elements are very similar, and the variance comes all from the, the difference of the means between the rows. So depending on which row you select, uh, you can have a very low, val um, low value of your estimate, a very high one, so it's flapping a lot more around the true value as it would if you select, uh, sorry, the columns, if you would select the rows. Because you see the totals of the, row, um, of the rows are much more similar than the totals of the columns. So this is of course a large influence. So when you measure this um, the homogeneity within clusters, that is so-called uh, homogeneity measure, or sometimes also called intra-class correlation coefficient, rho. It looks a bit like an ANOVA. Uh, here in the denominator, you have the variance within the clusters, and in the denominator, you have the variance between um, the total variance of our population. So in the higher the variance within the clusters, um, the smaller the one gets. So, usually, if you do cluster sampling, you increase the variance of your estimator if the variance comes all from between clusters. And the means of the clusters are very far apart. If the amount of the variance comes all from within cluster variation, then you can think more of each cluster represents more, takes more of a representative of the, of the whole population. Uh, instead, otherwise, as you see, as you see here, the values can be very different depending on which cluster you select. So, this measure has a lot of to say when it comes to the variance of cluster sampling. And cluster sampling is the predominant uh, uh, sampling design that you have in the DSS. Yeah, there are the values. So, this is usually uh, cannot exceed one. 
that can be well, you know, um, as cannot approach minus one, it's bounded. But uh, again, you see uh, you have very high um, within cluster correlation, and there you have a very low one. So, now the estimation of design effects. Um, in both cases, clusters uh, have been selected by single random samples, or just select uh, each cluster with the equal uh, probability. And here, against the simple random sample for selecting from the population directly the elementary units. So this is the variance formula for the cluster sampling. Capital M is the number of clusters in the population. M is the number of clusters being selected. So in our example, this uh, capital M is 5 and this M was 2. So this is just a design effect for simple cluster sampling. Um, I can write it like this. And this row again is here the class correlation. So if M is usually, I would assume that capital M is much larger than, than uh, capital M. So you can drop this factor and just show the simpler version. And this would be then our uh, design effect. The only thing we need to estimate would be this row. And B, in this case, I assume that each cluster has the same size. So B is the cluster size. And here, yeah, uh, sigma square, you see, is just uh, the variance of the cluster totals. So those formulas are very similar. Only thing is different that you use the uh, elementary units to put on the calculate sigma, and here the totals in each cluster. In each cluster. So, and comparing the design effects, you see there uh, the, the variance for this uh, column by column um, cluster selection as a five times. Uh, 0.77 higher variance than simple random sampling, so it's much worse. And selecting clusters column um, row-wise has a uh, much um, smaller variance than simple random sampling. Would, so this would be perfectly because the other sampling variance is smaller. Okay. Now, there's a different uh, approach to estimate. Of course, we could estimate the design effect directly by this formula. Then we just estimate the variance of this um, cluster sampling and um, estimate the variance of simple round sampling. The problem with that is that you only know this because the, the sample has not been selected by simple round sampling, so we can only guess that. And to circumvent this, there's a different approach to, um, to estimate the design effects. This is this model based approach. So we take some assumptions about the population there. Why i j just corresponds to the, to the value in the population of the, the j element and the y element in the e cluster. So we assume that this random variable has a constant uh, variation of e sigma square and covariance between elements in the same cluster as e sigma square times row, so the interclass correlation coefficient. Um, across between clusters, um, elements are thought to be uh, independent, so the covariance is uh, there. So taking those assumptions, you can write design effect as the product of those two um, yeah, part-wise design effects. Um, this is the design effect as a due to clustering. The clustering process, so the similarity elements within clusters, and this the P is due to the effect of using um, unequal probability sampling. So, of course, simple random sampling or simple selection of clusters is not the only thing you can do. You can do, of course, the size sampling and so on. And this is just the effect that it's due to using different um, unequal inclusion probabilities. So, depth C is just what we have seen before, more or less, uh, only in this case there is, uh, in general, assumed uh, this E bar, um, the E bar is the average cluster size. And I just indicate with a hat here, rho, that's meant that would be an estimator of this intra-class correlation coefficient. So, in case we have unequal probability sampling, we might also here have the weighted mean E. E star for the um, instead of the E um, yeah, on their average. So that's um, how to calculate this, this part you've seen before. So we're similar uh, the design based approach. 
then def p, this is this formula, I will show you how you derive that, but this is you have to multiply this def c to get your design effect. And why I just the weights of the just elemental and basic classes. So this plot here just shows you the field, the, the homogeneity, so the, yeah, the interclass correlation for row and the cluster size d. And uh, this is the how the how they affect the design effect. So this is all, all design effect, and you see it's not so sensitive to uh, to increase in cluster size, but highly sensitive. To increasing the homogeneity within clusters, so that the whole variance comes between the difference um, between the difference of the means um, over the clusters. So that's how it's yeah, functional relation between those two things. Okay, now what's the effective sample size? Um, effective sample size similar to as the as the number of ultimate sampling units required in SRS which yields the same position um, on a certain estimator as under the given complex sampling design. So how many units do we have to draw to get the same position under the current design? This can be less or more than the actual sampling design has. So n is the, the current sampling design, um, is the yeah, size of the current sampling design, and here is the design effect uh, of the sampling design P, and it just gives an arbitrary estimator there uh, to that. So that's it. And this factor is used to, yeah, to ensure the comparability of the different sample designs across the ASS. So now, of course, the ASS is a, is a multi-purpose and a multivariate, so we have a lot of uh, variables in there, so it doesn't make sense to do just this uh, calculate the effect, I mean, the effect of sample size uh, for one estimator or one variable. So we do this for a lot of multitude of variables. So this def c is calculated for a lot of different variables, where this def p only depends on the sampling design. So this is the same for each sampling design. Then we take the average of all um, design effects. It's going to be either the, the, red, um, yeah, the median or the, the remetnic mean. And then the final step would be we set the cross sample size such as the expected net sample size, divided by this average design effect is equal to 1,500 for countries that have more than 2 million inhabitants and 800 for ones that have less. So, in that way, the effect of sample size in each country should be comparable. So, for big countries, it's 150 and for lesser ones, 180. What that means is that the quality of the estimate would be like the drawing in each country that is big, 1,500 elements by simple random sampling, and in smaller ones, 800 elements by also simple random sampling. So in that way, what we like to have is that the variance of the estimators, the sampling variance of the estimators, are the same across the countries. So that's the way uh, we then decide what the cross sample size should be. And that's the end of my talk. Thank you. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, no. It's just a sampling error here that's uh, just considered one of the And I need an analysis that basically this effective cycle size is almost no more graphic difference because we are done. The amount of field in the sample fields you need to be normally bigger than the path. Mm -hmm. Is this the only question that we have? Um, these are all preliminary values because um, I can only calculate the effective sample size after the sample was taken. Mm -hmm. So that's, um, that's, that's all done on basis of the, of the um, round before. 
So and after the actual round was selected for which the cross sample size was determined, then I see afterwards if the estimated design effects match, match the ones that I calculated the cross sample size with. So usually, of course, there are countries that come below this, uh, can, can be below this number if the sample is selected. And again, uh, I have to say that this is also an estimate, so can it only estimate the effect of the design effect? And it's not so simple as here. Um, in this case, it's there, or even in that one where I calculate this and this. Um, because it's not just single stage sampling, you have a uh, multi stage sampling, you're selecting clusters and then smaller clusters within bigger clusters and so on, it is makes things much more difficult. Um, yeah, on general, you would have to estimate this thing here, which is not feasible for complex sample size. You have to go with some approximation. So, and again, this one usually you can't because the actual sample was not selected that way. Is the is the is the net sample size here? Sample size um, that well, delivers the same, it's the same um, yeah, variance under your actual sample yeah. design, like under SSI. And if you want to compare the samples, and you have uh, not a single random sample, random samples will be yeah. So, yeah, that's the baseline. Of course, the higher your sample, um, your design effect, the higher your, uh, your, your, um, your, your cross sample size has to be. provides all these weights and effects to people. So that's great and helpful. Thank you very much, Stefan. Um,